So we have one more presentation before our coffee break. Um, uh, our speaker is Professor Sanjay Sharma, Associate Professor in Intelligent Autonomous Control Systems, School of Engineering, Computing and Mathematics, University of Plymouth. Um, the presentation is about marine autonomy, research and applications. Thank you very much. Uh, first, I would like to thank the organizing committee for organizing such a useful event. In the morning, we went to see the coral reef. And when I was seeing the coral reef, I was also trying to observe, we see the rarest coral reef here. So I realized it's a blue color. That's my tie to reflect that. I have learned so much about coral reef just in two days. I could not believe that they can contribute so much in our ecosystem. Because as an engineer, we always talk about machines, machines, machines. I know after some time, it will be overpopulated and it will create problem, uh, but not at least in marine area. And that's why I'm going to propagate some ideas of marine autonomy in our uh, institution we are doing some research and application in marine autonomy. So my name is Sanjay Sharma. I'm associate professor as already pointed out. I'm also head of autonomous marine research uh, group at University of Plymouth. And these are some of the vehicles we are using to collect data and prove our concept. So why we require autonomous system? Because in every aspect of life, autonomy will be there. And it's more prevalent in the transportation sector. So you can see the autonomy more or less everywhere in transportation sector, drones, road, and sea as well. And the drive behind is just figures, billion, billion of dollars. Okay. So there are, this is going to last for next 20 years, I think. But this has also boosted many technology like GIS mapping, eco-fencing, and edge computing. So there are tremendous opportunity in this area. So why we want to do research in marine autonomous system? Because there are tremendous use in both in military and civilian. And then the technology has advanced so much that we can think of using some machines, marine machine, which will be like a superhuman. And like if we have many superhuman working together, we can get the work done, something which we have not thought before. So computing power technology such as AI, machine learning, optimization has increased so much and that has helped us to increase the machine IQ. And Sometimes we are worried that machine may be thinking more than us uh, because what the reaction will be the next from the machine. And if the human are not intelligent, whether we will get humiliated or something like that. So every area, the machine IQ has increased as the same in the autonomous area as well. So the people may ask, why do marine autonomy mean to them? And it's a very conflicting response you can get because most of the people will think that marine autonomy means full autonomy but this type of word is not going to sail among the industrialists because they are not happy that such a large cargo ship will be fully autonomous with no guarantee that something can go wrong who's going to take care so 100 percent autonomous ship will not be going well with the shipping company so they want some autonomy where they can safely, uh, energy efficiently do the operation. And autonomous vehicle, which we are trying to prove the concept everywhere are more or less providing this opportunity. if not going for full autonomy. So these are the basic main pillar of any autonomous system and artificial intelligence, machine learning and sensor fusion are helping to achieve these three main pillars. 
So we require good navigational system, good guidance system, and good and optimal control system. And while, if all these three work in synergy, we'll get the good autonomous marine vehicle system. So that's the idea behind. And we are working in all these three area. The central element of any future marine autonomous system will be the application of software where we can combine the techniques, machine learning and all these things to provide a better future estimation where we can take the better decision for autonomy. So we are working in the all four main area of marine autonomy where we are using artificial intelligence techniques. So first area where we are working is perception because you have to gather the information either from sensor from anywhere for the environment where you want to operate to. And then you don't want to use unnecessary many sensor, many uh, unnecessary things. So optimization is going to be the key. You can't just say, okay, I can use 20 sensor and all these things for what reason? So optimization of the number of sensor, location of the sensor and the path is also very important. And suppose you are designing something, the optimization of the parameters will be also important because we want to create autonomous system which is energy efficient, cost efficient, and efficient in many other way. After that, most of the people know that we have to generate some command signal, optimal control signal to move the vehicle from one place to another place because that's your desire. And the fourth area, which is uh, becoming very, very important in autonomous sector is diagnostic. Because there will be many things in the autonomous marine system, many things can go wrong. But how long can you wait till you do the maintenance? And how you know that what is going wrong? So digital twinning and all these things are coming. So diagnostic of the fault going in autonomous marine system is very, very important. So it's so not only diagnostic, but classification of the fault is also important because you don't want to rush to the marine vehicle and you think, okay, you can get away with that because the fault is not very serious. So this type of things will save you money, time and energy as well. So this is our research group and it's not fixed one because people are moving, joining at the moment, uh, just four or five weeks before this, the research group we have, but I know some of the members are moving. So, and some of you who are not aware of the Plymouth. So Plymouth is in the Southwest of uh, UK. So it's uh, three hours from London, but it's a beautiful ocean city and very safe city to live and enjoy. The life there, only negative thing is the weather. So it's raining, dark, and you not get sun, as you can see here. Apart from that, everything is fine. <laughs> so, <laughs> and that was the reason when I moved to UK in young age, I thought, oh, compared to India, this is the place I want to live because temperature never goes beyond 25 degrees. So you can work 24 hours, you can never feel tired. But now after working 26 years, I want to go back either to India or Bali and settle down there because my body requires now sun. <laughs> so any young people, I would recommend and go and work in UK. You can generate huge results because you have 24 hour working without tiring. So we are creating a, because autonomous area is in every sector, like I've told you, land, air, and the sea. So we are also creating a lab which can have all this facility where we can prove the concept in the lab. So we are creating a nearly 19 million pound lab for autonomous system in Plymouth. And this will be 16 by 10 meter by seven meter height. And whole area will be with the motion capture system. So anything you do inside will be captured by camera, and you can plan whatever you want to do. So we want to do something uh, is connected to the SIP simulator lab, virtual reality lab, and it can be connected to anywhere in the world. So one of the things we want to do because we have money with MIT, 
and I was there last year. And we are trying to simulate some of the marine things they will be doing in the water with the six degree platform we will have in the lab. And then we want to see how much time delay is there. If someone is going up and down in the water and how much the six degree platform is going up and down in our lab and after how much time. This will be very important because we are thinking in future autonomous cargo will be the reality, but nobody will allow the big cargo ship without pilot to come and deck at the port. So they have to be well inside the ship. So what the people can do, the people can hire a smaller autonomous vehicle from the place and they can operate from the place they want to. So, so suppose American ship is coming here, some American company can hire uh, the autonomous marine vehicle from here, Jada, and they will control it from there. And if they know how much time delay is there to control, so they can accurately load and unload by using the autonomous a smaller marine vehicle. And that's why we are working on this time delay. Another thing we are working, which I will tell you later, and that's also very important. So we have people in our group who are working on AI optimization, advanced control system, multi-sensor data fusion, and more or less we are applying the AI-based techniques in design of navigation guidance and control of autonomous marine vehicle. So the perception what we did, we did a fuzzy logic based multi-sensor data fusion and the advantage are many because I'm not going to tell because most of the people know it, but if you have many sensor complemented to each other, that's improved the sensor reliability and also remove a noise because it must be knowing moving average. You just average the last three and four data it will give you better reading than the current reading. And another thing is that because sensors are mostly noisy and it's difficult to remove the noise. So if you have made a estimation on the basis of sensor reading, then you can predict what the sensor is going to tell next. So suppose you are going to take action after 10 seconds and you know that things 10 seconds before, so we are well prepared. Uh, what action I should take. So we are ready to take action on the predicted information and that you can also do by using algorithm. So these type of things are very important in autonomous marine area because you want to know something in advance to get yourself prepared for any corrective action. And this will save you money, cost, and tear and wear of the system as well. So this is one of the PhD done where she has done the fuzzy logic based multi-sensor data fusion architecture with fault tolerance, where we are trying to combine the sensors together and trying to see if the one sensor goes out of operation, can the vehicle still be operating on the basis of estimated information. So you can see here there's a result and we have provided permanent fault one, one of the sensor and then because of the technology we developed, the vehicle was estimating the same position, what could have been the real position of the vehicle. So this will help because when you are operating something in autonomously in water, you don't want to get confused. Sensor go on what the vehicle will do. It's not going to stop, which direction to go. So these are the technology will help you to keep your vehicle moving till you realize it's totally deviated and then you, you need to stop it. And yesterday I was, think, I was seeing many presentation on monitoring the Kohler Reef and all these things. And I was thinking if somehow you can get some information from the surface of the water rather than going inside because the coral reef is not very down. Maybe they, they are just, uh, they are just uh, putting out some gas, nitrogen, oxygen, whatever is there, some marker, and then you can benchmark it in that area and create a model and then you keep on collecting the data in future and you say the health of the coral reef is deteriorating or improving. I don't know because we have done this type of things for the estimating the burial depth of undersea cable. So we collected the data from the surface of the water. We never went inside. 
And then we use the particle filter estimation to estimate the burial length of the cable. And this one PhD done is very, uh, uh, very well known uh, theory. He's working everywhere to estimate the cable, uh, uh, burial length of the cable. And we have done many autopilot design, which is based on AI for energy efficient. These are part following. So here we get the information from sensor, we estimate it, and then we have desired trajectory to follow. And if there is any error between the two, then the controller acts on the actuator and try to move your vehicle in that direction. And some of the experiment we wanted to uh, replicate because US Navy, they tested rifle missile from the unmanned surface vehicle. And this will suddenly change the dynamic of the system. And your vehicle may be patrolling the border of any country and you suddenly fire something, your vehicle may go inside enemy trajectory and uh, territory and then can be destroyed. So we wanted to check that what is uh, what is going to happen? Whether any optimal control can you still control the vehicle you, if you suddenly change the dynamics. So obviously we cannot fire missiles. So we have jerry can full of water and we just suddenly pull it. And then we try to compare the two type of controller. Uh, just wanted to see whether the vehicle is following the desired trajectory or not. So this is the result. The first is the multi-predictive controller. It's an optimal controller. One of my colleagues before me has already told many things about that, so I'm not going into detail. Uh, but if you see the first result, you can see the vehicle was not able to be on the same trajectory. It might have been turned to enemy trajectory or territory. But in the second case, even you have suddenly changed the dynamics of the system by taking out so much weight suddenly from the vehicle, the vehicle was able to follow your desired trajectory. So this type of things we have shown to London Metropolitan Police because they wanted to patrol uh, the Thames River. And they say, okay, they can, they obviously not going to fire Mijaz from there, but they said there can be sudden change in the weight. We didn't ask what, but uh, yes. So th that's, we wanted to show them that we can design something. So similarly, we are working heavily in a genetic algorithm and particle swarm optimization technique uh, to mostly to optimize the coefficient of the parameters of our model and controller. So this is one of the work we have done where we have used genetic algorithm in real time uh, to design a nonlinear autopilot for our unmanned surface vehicle. Uh, which is called a Springer. So local controller network, if someone is working in chemical industry are widely known because in chemical industry, you have the well-defined operating region and then you can combine it together by creating a linear controller uh, by local controller network, which is nonlinear controller. But in this marine area, nobody has used it because it's very difficult to know the operating region. So we have taken the help of genetic algorithm to design it and try to compare with the previous result we got. And we got some fascinating result as well. So this is the result where we are trying to design an autopilot to uh, follow some trajectory. And then after that, we also got excited to use the genetic algorithm to design a nonlinear multi-predictive controller. Because most of the time when your vehicle and the overall system are nonlinear, and it linear controller can work but can fail. It will not work for all operating region. And that's why the nonlinear autopilot is bad. And if you are designing a model predictive controller, then you are optimizing as well. And this was the result. And this uh, we have just try to design a nonlinear model adaptive uh, model predictive controller and try to stop the simulation just 10 seconds before the sampling time so that your command is ready. So I can't say it will be fully optimized, but it's sub-optimized, but the results are good, it's not bad. 
As I told you that we also wanted to know because when we are testing our vehicle near the shore, we are getting sometimes click noise. So we are thinking it might have a strike with something, a stone or something maybe there, but we didn't know should we uh, go and take out the vehicle and see what happened or just continue with the operation. Because you can think of once you take out the vehicle out from the water, it takes you three, four hours to put it back. So whole day is gone. And maybe the fault is not so severe where you have to stop the operation. So we wanted to automatically detect it. So we wanted to create a cluster of fault, which is had distinctive features and then classify it. And then we can say, okay, whether we want to stop operation or not. So we, want, we, 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 have, we have used Wavelet to create cluster of optimal features and the neural network to classify the type and severity of faults. So this was the experimental things we did. So we tried to collect the data with 10% broken blade, 20%, 50%, 100% half blade broken. And then we know the blade is broken, but we didn't know how much and should be stop or not. So 10, 20%, maybe up to 50% will be still operating. But if it's half blade broken, then we'll think, okay, it can unbalance the vehicle and we have to stop it. So we are able to design this and it automatically detect the fault in the blade and give the warning and stop the motor and everything. And then we, you get the information as well. Uh, so one of my postdoc, we are utilizing the similar technique like generating a wavelet features from the sensor data to identify the healthy operation of propeller and unhealthy operation of the propeller. So if you are able to create the feature of healthy operation of propeller, anytime you get the data which is not matching with the feature of the healthy operation of the propeller, then you can say something has gone wrong. But you can also collect the data for different type of fault. And if you collect it, then you can classify it. You can just say, okay, the propeller is not working because it has angle wire and something like that. So any fault, if you have, you can further classify it. Uh, so what is the problem here? Because most of the sensor data are two dimensional. Uh, one dimensional with time and you cannot create a feature in time. So you have to convert this one dimensional data into two dimensional data. And that's why we use the continuous wavelet transformation, which transform your time domain data into image. And now you know that LXNet and many pre-trained network, deep reinforcement learning techniques are there, which can easily identify the object. So once you create the object, you just say, okay, these are the objects are I have collected for my healthy operation of my propeller, all possible healthy. And it's shown that the features repeats because it's like a sinusoidal cycle, like a power, every time it repeats. So healthy features repeats after some time. So once after one cycle, you know how much data I require to create a healthy feature and compare it with the other feature. So once it's there, then you collect 5,000 data and then you say, let's create a feature, and compare it with the healthy feature, which I have already classified before. And if the pre-trained network say that it doesn't match with your healthy feature, then you say something is wrong. But if you have also classified, then you can also tell what type of fault is there. So we are working with one company in the UK and we are trying to classify the fault. They will, uh, so we have the healthy data, but they will provide us the faulty data. So that's a very important technique as well for marine autonomous system. And we also have a cluster there where the people and industry are working together uh, to work and create a future autonomy at sea. So this is a very big cluster in the south uh, west of UK. And there are many companies, American companies and UK and European company are involved here. So these are the futures from our point of view that the future is going to be feature-based navigation. We are not going to compete with GPS navigation. GPS navigation is the old age navigation because 
The reason is simple because we are operating in a highly complex environment and congested environment. So GPS is not going to work. So we have to create some feature where we can put ourselves with respect to our surrounding. And that can help you to have a safer navigation. Even we have pilot inside, if the pilot can see this type of picture uh, on his screen and her screen, then he and she will be able to easily navigate in a congested area rather than on some point base. So we have done some experiment in here as well. So we have uh, created some features where there are no GPS signal. And the reason is very simple because GPS signal are weak. They can be jammed and signal can be lost in confined territory. But for designing a robust marine navigation guidance and control system, you require feature-based navigation. So this is one PSD completed where the features and 3D map work created by visual slam. And then we created the geometry where we can put our vehicle with respect to the features and safely navig navigate without any GPS. Okay, so there are many work done in uh, different area. So I don't know, it's not, okay. So these are some of the video I've just shown in one place. So we have done less amount of underwater work because the vehicle can be lost and it's too costly to operate as well. But I, on surface, we have done many and proved the concept of all the things we are talking. And one of the PSD, we are done also how to land the drone on the moving platform, which can be any marine vehicle. And then we have also done the virtual leader follower uh, swamp path optimization techniques where we can have cooperative cooperation between different marine vehicles. So another area where we are trying to work is the cooperative localization and navigation, uh, because uh, to reduce the communication between the vehicle and other things, uh, we have to develop energy efficient algorithm. So we are thinking to develop the entropy based navigation, where we are trying to allocate the energy states of the vehicle and environment and connect it together by some entropy function. And if you equate it to the electrical power in the vehicle, then we can optimize the operation we are trying to do in a formation. So these are the things we are trying to do. We are trying to apply the funding for that with Southampton. So hopefully if you get, then it's quite an exciting area. And then I think we cannot avoid human from the chain because we are talking about only five, six, seven, and eight, and nine autonomous vehicles. Suppose you have many, like an army of the autonomous vehicle. Who is going to control? The overall, it can become unimaginably counterproductive and hazardous as well. So the man should be in the center of supervisory control. Even here they are saying, okay, 10 vehicles go this side. 10 on that side, just a gesture of traffic control can make so efficient and energy efficient control and the politician will be also happy because we are not removing man from the loop. So these are the futures, but there are many bottlenecks and some bottlenecks are because of our fault because machine learning we think can do everything, but machine learning can only work if you have good quality of data. But we are collecting the data maybe for one kilometer going inside the sea, and then we are saying, okay, now it's good. I have designed something which can go inside the sea in a storm and any environmental condition. So these are not possible, and that's some more, more or less people are doing. They're not collecting the good quality of data. But we are also trying to remove human from the chain, but you know the human are creative because machine can make uh, design of a horse, but cannot create, uh, cannot make a creative horse because when you are drawing, you can make something creative there and it may be looking like a horse, but something extra. So this type of intelligence you can also only embed when we keep human in the loop. And their lack of clear strategy, even in UK, nobody knows which size of the vehicle should be fully autonomous. We should have the autonomous capability, but the pilot inside the vehicle. And what is the rules? 
and who is going to pay for insurance if you are driving autonomous vehicle and all these things. So all these things are jeopardized in this area. And that is more or less the bottleneck of the uh, any technology you develop, they are not willing to accept it. And then the politician is on top because they think, okay, this will uh, create uh, unemployment, which may not be true, but is fear is always there. And then you design something uh, very cheaply, autonomous system, autopilot, somebody will come and say, okay, I can hack your autopilot system. And they've done it in our cybersecurity lab. Whatever we design, they hack it, right? For just at the actuator level. And we want to move the vehicle in that direction and they slowly, slowly, slowly divert it. So it's very, very difficult. Then you have to now use the cybersecurity system. And so all these things add up cost and can become very expensive at the end. So some of the project we are working on, uh, which is based on the earlier, I've told you the human robot teaming, uh, where we are trying to do something, then deep reinforcement learning, autonomous sailboat, uh, mostly applying to offshore wind farm inspection. And then we are also working on hybrid marine vehicle where we are trying to design an intelligent power management control strategy because most of the uh, bigger autonomous vehicle will have many power systems. It's a diesel, electric, solar, wind, whatever you can say. But if you are not managing it efficiently, then you are not maximizing the fuel saving and emission reduction and all these things. So we are working how to uh, design a intelligent power management control strategy if there are more power. And then to create a new generation in this area, we have also started a machine autonomous system where we are training people at master level and teaching them all about the things which are required for any autonomous system like sensor technology, machine learning, AI, modeling, adaptation, marketing, ethical approach of autonomous system, trustworthy in operation, and all these things we are covering through this course. And we have already run it for two years and most of the people have already got the job. So it's becoming famous. And we are trying to combine this course with the robotics as well. So maybe this will change next year, MSc, uh, robotics and autonomous system. And this is the book uh, I've edited, one book uh, in this area. Uh, the chapter from Antonio as well. So navigation control of autonomous marine vehicle. And if someone is interested to know more about the marine vehicle, how they are navigating and control, and uh, then you are happy to go through this book. And uh, this is thank you very much for listening. And we have our website as well, and for course and for our research group. So if you want to know more about our work, you are more than welcome. You just put autonomous marine system research group limit, and then you get all the details about. It. So we are working in a many, many project uh, using autonomous marine system for many applications, and particularly in offshore wind uh, energy.